witches and wizards of the world. This is the Hogwarts chaplain coming to you from the Room of Requirement, broadcasting across the globe on the WWN, the Word and Wizard Network. My friends, I read in the international section of the Daily Prophet this morning a sad development from America. Apparently, late yesterday, the current Muggle president has rescinded in order to create and protect transgendered bathrooms in schools across America. My friends, this is a sad development, and it is a reminder to us in the resistance that we must continue to fight for the rights of all people every day. But it also confirms the suspicion I have had for quite some time about the current Muggle president, and it is this. Clearly, he has never read the seven-volume series written by our own honorary professor of modern magical history, J.K. Rowling. Because if you'd read even one book of that series, and in some cases, even one chapter of each book of that series, you would realize the importance of having all your students feel safe to enter whatever bathroom is true to who they are. Just think about the bathroom policy at Hogwarts. What would have happened? What would have happened if students did not feel safe to enter any bathroom they chose? Remember when Hermione was being attacked by a troll? Can you imagine if Ron and Harry had stopped outside and felt unsafe to enter that bathroom? My friends, we would have lost Hermione on that sad Halloween night. And without Hermione, well, as Ron said, they wouldn't have lasted two days without her. And also think of other things that were concocted in bathrooms when people entered the bathroom that was true to who they were. It was a bathroom, my friends, where Hermione and Ron and Harry put together the polyjuice potion that allowed them to discover who was or who was not the heir of Slytherin. My friends, the word bathroom appears 90 times in the seven volume series. That's almost 12 bathroom references per book. <clears throat> and thank goodness Moaning Myrtle felt she could enter any bathroom she pleased. Through Moaning Myrtle, we learned about the basilisk. We learned about the diary. She even visited the boy prefect bathroom twice, which enabled Cedric and Harry to hear the lovely singing of people under the water inside their tri-wizard eggs. <clears throat> But I digress. <clears throat> Consider also that the entrance to the Chamber of Secrets, where was it, my friends? A bathroom! Thank goodness that Lockhart and Harry and Ron and Hermione thought nothing of the label of that bathroom as they rushed in. What would have happened had they not entered that bathroom? Harry would have never gotten down to fight the basilisk, to defeat the basilisk, to stab the first horcrux, and to condemn Voldemort to more years outside of a body. They entered through a bathroom because they entered a bathroom, all of them. And thank goodness, my friends, that Professor Snape did not stop at the entrance to a bathroom not labeled for him as he entered to save Draco, who was bleeding to death. My friends, I am not just the Hogwarts chaplain, I was chaplain at another school before coming to Hogwarts, and another school before that, and I will tell you this about bathrooms. The scene of Draco bleeding in that bathroom is very symbolic. I saw so many times, so many times, that bathrooms were places where students would go for refuge, sometimes to be alone, sometimes to have a private conversation, sometimes to weep, sometimes to wonder what their futures would be. There are many people like Draco who find themselves attacked in the world and they wind up in bathrooms bleeding, needing help. Bathrooms are sacred places at Hogwarts, places of bravery, of planning, at times of solitude and at times of conversation and sacred scheming to save the world. Thank goodness anyone can enter any bathroom at Hogwarts. That is the lesson of that series. <clears throat> Mr. Muggle President, whenever you are running an organization, and especially a school, you do well to always ask the question, what would Dumbledore do? Safe bathrooms at Hogwarts. Let people save the world at Hogwarts. Before I sign off, let me say something about the rare, the very rare, wizards and witches 
who are called by vocation to practice the magic of transfiguration. A bit of history, my friends. You will remember that Armando Dippet was a great headmaster at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, but he passed away halfway through a particular school year. He was replaced unanimously, of course, by the elected Albus Dumbledore. But Dumbledore still had the rest of the year to teach his course. But what course was he teaching? Of what great subject in the magical world was Albus Dumbledore already a famous professor and public intellectual? If you did not know, I'm here to tell you, he was the professor of transfiguration. Because every witch and wizard knows that transfiguration is the most complex, the most beautiful, the most mysterious form of magic. But when Professor Dumbledore became the headmaster, he had to replace himself in the classroom. But he knew there was a young, recent graduate of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, someone who had been a head girl, a prefect many times, a captain of the Quidditch team. She was living in Hogsmeade. She was sadly a young widow, but she had been such an important student to Dumbledore, he went right to her because according to Dumbledore, she was the best student in transfiguration he had ever seen. He went straight to Hogsmeade and offered her his old job and she took it. She was a good person for schools. Not only was she a good student, but she had a very good sense of pastoral care. Her father, by the way, was a nice muggle, a Scottish minister, I'll say. And I have an idea in my head that the reason my particular position was created, a chaplain for the school, came under the headship of this woman who became headmistress Minerva McGonagall. Yes, my friends, two great wizards in magical history, Minerva McGonagall and Albus Dumbledore, were both rarely gifted witches and wizards who knew the art of transfiguration. My friends, there are wizards and witches among us who by nature have been called to live out entire lives of transfiguration. All of us experience changes and by nature change is hard. We release adrenaline and cortisol. We are concerned, we are frightened. We often attack, we defend ourselves. We fight the things that are different. Transfiguration as an idea is complicated and for many of us, frightening. I will confess to you all that I as the Hogwarts chaplain have lived most of my magical life not having to think much at all about which bathroom I used or about changing my life in any radical way. I have had to learn much, but the Bible is clear, clear. I am called to love my neighbor, which means I must know my neighbor and which means I must seek the safety and freedom for my neighbor that I desire for myself. I also happen to be an Episcopalian, which means I have taken baptismal vows and reaffirmed them as often as possible to love and respect human dignity in all persons and Christ in all persons. And so I am doing my best to learn this art, this vocation of transfiguration, that there are those among us who have been called to live. And they have shown me time and time again through their bravery, though it is not their job to teach the rest of us out of our ignorance. But I am grateful for those who continue to do so. You have shown me the truth that Jesus the great wizard spoke, that when you know the truth, it will set you free. So I say to you, Mr. Marvel President, there should be safe bathrooms in schools. There should be safe bathrooms everywhere because every wizard and witch and muggle who is called to the life of transfiguration, they are the Albus Dumbledores and the Minerva McGonagalls among us. They know things we cannot know. They have fought battles we will never fight. We need them and we need them safe because that's what we would want for ourselves. Thank you for tuning in and do remember that when you know the truth, it will set you free. Thank you. And remember, be a seeker.